pleasant day to everyone, students, fellow teachers, and parents. I am Dr. Eden P. Beltran, the Gender and Development and Extension Services of our university, the President Ramon Magsaysay, State University in Iba Sambalas, Philippines. My task today is to discuss the legal framework of the governance, gender, and development program. As you know, gender and development program is the perspective and process that is participatory, empowering, equitable, sustainable, and free from violence, respectful of human rights, and supportive of self-determination and actualization of human potentials. This program applies the GAD uh, framework in the policies, human resource management, projects and activities of the government to promote the goals of equality, equity and empowerment of women and other sectors in the margins. The government being the duty bearer adopts gender and development for the realization, the fulfillment or provision, respect, promotion and protection of the rights of women and other marginalized sectors in our society. As to why gender issues are human rights issues, the, uh, it is true that the basic inequality of genders as to access to control and enjoyment of power, resources and benefits, as well as opportunities is a violation of human rights principle of non discrimination, equality, and universality. The process of achieving the realization of human rights involves accountability, good, good governance, independence of judiciary, and people's participation and transparency. The, the law holds that the state affirms the role of women in nation building and ensures the substantive equality of men and women. Uh, it condemns uh, all forms of violation. And in our laws, okay, we are talking about laws here. So uh, in our country, the paramount law of the land is the Philippine Constitution, which was, um, which was ratified in 1987. All other laws in this country must con conform to the provisions of the Constitution. And this include the international law, national legislations or the Republic Acts, uh, presidential issuances, as well as the local laws. Okay. This uh, represents the framework of our gender and development program in this country. There are so many laws, so I will delve immediately into the laws. First of all, I want to tackle the international mandates. The God program of the government is basically based on the Universal uh, Declaration of Human Rights. The very basic provisions of our God laws are based on this declaration, as well as on the other UN, UN issuance or UN treaty, which is known as SEDA or Conventions on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. So the SEDA promotes equality in all fields. Affirmative, uh, these are affirmative actions for women and protection of women from violence. And this um, went through a series of uh, reviews and it is being observed in all, almost all countries. In our own constitution, in section 14, article two, it, pro, it is provided that the, the state recognizes the role of women in nation building and shall ensure the fundamental equality before the law of women and men. And based on this, a series of laws were passed um, first of which are, is a framework for development, which covers the period 1989 to 1992. It was known as PDPW. This is the Philippine Development Plan for Women. And this was 
also adopted by passing other laws. Um, the first hi uh, highlighted law, which is which was uh, which was um, hallmark of legislation in the Philippines, is the Republic Act 91, 71-92, rather. Women in Development and Nation Building Act of 1992 provides for government to incorporate women's and gender concerns in development agenda. The specific provisions of the RE7192 included equal, equal capacity of men to borrow and obtain lo loans, equal access to credit and other non-monetary resources, as incorporators and married women's equal rights with men in applying for passports, secure visas, and other travel documents. Whereas before they had none, they had to uh, secure the permission of their spouses. And then there was this also uh, long term plan, which covered 1995 up to actually. 2025, the PPGRD, which is the Philippine Plan for Gender Responsive Development. It updates the version of, it is the updated version of the P, PDPW, and it serves as the successor plan, which covers a lo long-term goals and upon which uh, various programs of the government were, were based. EO273 approves and adopts the PPGRD for implementation and the General Appro Appropriations Act for more than de a decade has uh, provided the allocation of 5% of the total agency budget for gender re responsive uh, development projects. The next uh, law, the next major law is the Magna Carta of Women, which, which is a law that we should all be all proud of because only a few countries have a similar law. What are the salient features of the Magna Carta of Women? The MCW defines discrimination against women pursuant to the CEDO or the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Dis Discrimination Against Women by the United Nations. It espouses a policy of gender mainstreaming and declares the rights of women as human rights. It ensures the equitable participation and representation of women in government, political parties, civil service, and the private sector. It affords equal opportunities of women in education, employment, livelihood, social protection, and others, including women in the military. So this, since this is uh, the Magna Carta of Women, it strengthens also the body in the government known as, previously known as the National Commission on the Role of Philippine Women, which was then renamed as Philippine Commission on Women, which creates all these um, rules and regulations on how to implement the uh, gender and development program of the government. Also, the Magna Carta of Women creates Human Rights Commission as a body, uh, creates mandates for the human rights creation, uh, for the Commission of Human Rights rather, to handle women's rights concerns and to provide violations for such, uh, uh, provide penalties for such violations. So what are the specific provisions of the Magna Carta of Women? It provides protection from all forms of violence against women, protection and security in, all, in times of disaster, calamities, and other crisis situation. It provides participation and representation, equal treatment before the law, equal access and elimination of discrimination against women in education, scholarships, and trainings. Also, the Magna Carta of Women provides for equal participation in sports, in employment in fields of military, police, and other services, 
It provides for non-discriminatory and non-derogatory portrayal of women in media and field. It provides comprehensive health services and health information and education. It provides for lead benefits and equal rights in all matters relating to marriage and family relations. So here is another law. Probably all of you already know this. Um, RA 9262 is the anti-violence against women and their, their children. The definition of BAUSI is provided in this law, uh, which is supposed to cover all forms of violence against women and their children, or the domestic violence. And according to this law, there are four types of violence prohibited. These are physical violence, sexual violence, psychological violence, and economic violence. Baka hindi nyo pa alam yan. Economic violence is when example when uh, the right to support of the children is being denied by one of the parties, either the man or the woman, because this is a, an obligation. And then we have all, all these other laws no, that support that support the promotion and fulfillment of the uh, rights of women in particular. Bakit women lang? Because women are ma a marginalized sex sector. No? Uh, and for example, the Barangay Daycare Center Act is there to um, help women take care of their children and, al and also free them from child care so that they can also uh, pursue economic activities. And then you have the RA 6725 or the anti-sexual discrimination in employment. And 7877 is the anti-sexual harassment law, which was then amended by the recently passed RA 11313 or the Safe Spaces Act, which I will discuss later on. And then the Republic Act 9208, which is the Anti-Trafficking in Pen Person Act. We have RA 7610, which is the Special Protection of Children. RA 8353, or the Anti-Rape Law. And the uh, su Supplemental Law of RA 8505, which is the Rape Victim Assistance and Protection Act of 2008. Also, last was RA 7655, which increased the minimum wage of domestic helpers. And then the declaration of March 8 as National Women's Day in RA 6449. 6949 and RA 7322 increases the maternity benefits of women in the private sector. RA 6955 outlawed the practice of matching Filipino women for marriage to foreign nationals in a male or order basis. And RA 7688 gives representation to women in the Social Security Commission. 8042 mandates the safe state to apply gen gender sensitive criteria in the formulation and implementation of policies and programs affecting migrant workers. 7600 provides incentive to all government and private health institutions with rooming in and breastfeeding practices. RA 7160 provides for women representation in the local policy making through provincial and municipal de development council. We have, we have a lot of laws. So Civil Service Commission uh, Memorandum Circular Number 14 Series of 1989 enables government workers, especially women, to adopt flexible working hours. Executive number 209 is our civil code. Local government code made it mandatory for local development council or Sangunian to have a representative for the women's sector. And uh, this is an old law, uh, DNR admin binder number four series of 1991. 
um, mandates that both spouses can now be awarded civil certificate of stewardship contract. So it's no longer the men who are eligible. What are the other laws on and for women? RA uh, 10354 is the Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Act of 2012. RA 10361 is the Domestic Workers Act or Batas Kasambahay. RA 9995 is the Anti-Ortho -video, Video Voyeurism Act of 2009. RA 9501 is the Magna Carta for micro, small, and medium enterprises. RA 8369 is the Family Courts Act of 1997. And RA 8187 is the Paternity Leave Act of 1996. We all know those laws. And so now we let us focus on one specific law, which is RA's 18972 or the Solo Parents Welfare Act of 2000. This is the act providing for benefits and privileges to solo parents and their children's children and appropriating funds therefore. It was passed in November 2000. The solo parent is, de is defined as any individual falls under the following category. A woman who gives birth as a result of rape. A parent left uh, solo or alone with the responsibility of parenthood due to the death of a spouse. While the spouse is detained or serving sentence, the, boom, the, the spouse who is left behind is also considered a solo parent. Or due to physical and mental incapacity of the other spouse, the other spouse will become a solo parent. Due to the legal separation or de facto separation of spouse for at least one year, as long as he is entrusted with the custody of the children. And also due to the declaration of nullity of marriage, uh, the one who has custody is a solo parent under the law. And due to abandonment of spouse of at least for at least one year. So unmarried mother and father who has preferred to keep and rear their children instead of having others for the, uh, do that for them or give them up for to welfare institutions. And any other persons who solely provided parental care and support to a ch child or children. So those are the parent, uh, solo parents. And what are the benefits under the law? Uh, the parental leave is, an, is another law which grants a solo parent employee who has rendered at least one year of service with seven working days. Uh, and this is not cumulative. This is the parental leave law every year. Uh, a solo parent can access this benefit from the law. A requirement for the availment of the parental leave, uh, the, the one who applies for it must have at least one year of service, which is not, which is continuous and must have notified uh, uh, the employer within the reasonable uh, time and also must have the solo parent ID, which is the, obtained from the MSWDO. Okay. So not all are solo parent. You have to have uh, the recognition from the government agency. Okay. A solo parent may avail of parental leave with pay in the following circumstances. When the child gets ill, when he, he or she needs to attend a parent PTA meeting in school for an enrollment purposes, other circumstances necessary in the performance of parental duties and responsibilities where physical presence is required. And as to the flexible work uh, schedule of the 
of the solo parent, the work week of 48 hours in six days is compressed for five days, which is approximately 9.6 hours per day from Monday to Friday without payment of overtime in exchange for additional day off in a week. This is for uh, private, the private sector. An employer shall provide for a flexible work schedule. That's what the law uh, provides. And also, work discrimination is prohibited. No employer shall discriminate a solo parent or employee with respect to terms and conditions on of employment on, on account of his or her being a solo parent. And the termination of the leave benefit is provided uh, in, in terms of, in, on occasion of, uh, of the circumstances no longer, no longer present that uh, qualifies a person to become a solo parent. When these circumstances are no longer present, so then, the benefits and the as well as the as well as the status of a person being a solo parent is terminated. Okay, so this is uh, some sort of a chart pertaining to the solo parent. What are the other laws passed by the 17th Congress? What is the 17th Congress? Ito yung ano yung panahon ni Duterte. So these are the laws that were passed during the 17th Congress. The expanded maternity leave law, and then we have already mentioned about the safe streets and public spaces law, the anti-hospital deposit law, which is an amended law, and then the kalusugan ng at nutrition ng magnanay law, and then the four piece law. Okay, let's talk a bit about each of these laws. Uh, the expanded maternity leave law, or RA11210 is an act increasing the maternity leave period 105 days. So dati, dalawang buwan lang. Now it's 105 days for female workers with an option to extend for another 30 days without pay. So meaning you can, uh, if you're a woman who gave birth, you can extend up to 105 days, but the but the additional 30 days is without pay. And if you're a solo parent, you you have the option to to have an additional 15 days, and also this is without pay. So if if big sabihin, if a solo parent gives birth, the total maximum number of days would be 100. 150 uh, days okay but of course the 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 ones which are paid is only 105 days yung karadagan hindi nakasama doon sa may bayad okay and then uh, here is the implementing rules and regulations of RA 11210 and Okay, you can read about that in the law. And then we have RA11313, which all, you already know, uh, but I would like to uh, uh, discuss it a bit so that uh, we can uh, clarify the issues. Like, because before we had an anti sexual harassment law, which, is, which was RA7877. Uh, the difference between that law and this law, RA11313, is that the earlier law covers only sexual harassment done in school and employment, uh, employment spaces. Okay, in work at work, when you are discriminated, uh, when you are a victim of sexual harassment at work, you are protected by that law. But outside these two uh, con context, what are the two context? Education and employment related sexual harassment. Outside this, 
there is no protection from the law. So that, that is why RA11313 was passed. So RA11313 RA is the expanded sexual harassment law. So what does this law provide? That uh, it provides, of course, for, you know, for violation of certain acts that are prohibited. For example, the acts of stalking. This is pro prohibited uh, for the first offense hanggang 30 days. No? And then there is a fine of 30,000. Okay? And you have to attend a gender sensitivity seminar like this one. And then if it is, um, it, if it is uh, committed again for the second time, you can be imprisoned for one month and one day to six months with a fine of 50,000. Kaya wag nang uulitin. But if you're makulit, you have third offense, you can be arrested, uh, you can be confined, arrest to mayor to, to its maximum period and a fine of 100,000. Okay, what are the other types of uh, gender-based online sexual harassment prohibited under 11313? So these are the uh, some just some of the those that are uh, prohibited. So the law prohibits terrorizing and intimidating victims through physical, psychological, and emotional threats online. Unwanted sexual, misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist remarks and other comments online, whether publicly or through direct and private messages. Invasion of privacy through cyber stalking and incessant messaging. Uploading and sharing any form of media that contains photos, voice, or videos with the sexual content without the consent of the victim. An authorized recording, sharing, and any other victim's uh, photos, videos, or any uh, information online, impersonating identi identities of the victims online, or posting lies about the victims to harm their reputation, and filing false abuse report online platforms to silence the victims. Though, so the penalties for these uh, prohibited acts are Two to four, uh, two years and four months, and one day to six years and two months, or a fine of one hundred thousand to half a million, or both. Okay, this is very serious, so you should know about this. You should read uh, further about what the law prohibits. What are the duties of the school heads under the law? Does the school has the duty to disseminate the information on the provisions of the law, provides measures to prevent gender-based sexual harassment in education institution, and to create a committee on decorum and investigation to address complaints of gender-based sexual harassment. So if the school fails to do this, meron siyang liability. For non-implementation of duty, there is a fine of 5,000 to 10,000. And for failure to act, it's 10,000 to 15,000. Okay, so that's it. So what are those uh, com What are those acts that are prohibited? You have cat calling, yung mga sipol sipol dyan. And then yung, you have misogynistic, yung mga comments na uh, uh, laban sa mga iba't ibang genders no yung homo homophobic no so yung ang um, the the bottom line is we have to have respect for others and then ito pa yung mga uh, yung mga uh, tawag natin sa kanila yung mga nagmamasturbate o nagpapakita ng kanilang ari no ng hipo these are uh, covered by the law so even if uh, regardless of the place where it is committed, they are already uh, penalized by the law. Dati walang, ano, walang coverage sa public space. That now, uh, both, uh, all, all, all places are covered by the law.
uh, except of course the inside the house. Iba na yun. So RA1093 is the enhanced anti-hospital deposit law. So bawal maningil ng deposit to ang mga hospital or clinic bago magbigay ng basic emergency services sa pasyente. So hindi covered nitong law na ito yung mga uh, para sa skin care pag you, you know kung ayo kayong bigyan ng ano ng ng beauty care uh, you, you know yung tawag liposuction hindi naman po emergency kasi yun. So dito bawal maningin ng deposito sa pasyente. Okay? So it is unlawful for hospital, both public and private, to solicit, request, demand, or accept a deposit. So the, viol uh, the violation of this particular provision will warrant the penalty of six months and one day of imprisonment, but not more than two years and four months against the doctor or official or a fine not, fine not less than 100,000 and not more than 300,000. So who are liable? These are the officers or directors of clinics or hospitals who will violate the provision of 10932 or the six years of imprisonment yan, and up to a fine of half a million but not more than 1 million kapag doctor yung ano yung liable okay so dapat tandaan under this law bawal maningil ng deposito so kung walang ambulansya ang hospital maaring gamitin ang emergency vehicle ng LGU kino considerang emergency case ang panganganak o yung pag may nakunan dapat ipaskil ang mga serbisyo na kanilang ibinibigay sa entrance ng hospital and presumption of liability to a hospital kapag may namatay. Okay? At mas mataas ng parusa para sa paglabag na ito, ng batas na ito. Okay, we come to another law. This is the kalusugan ng, at nutrisyon ng magnanay law. So the first 100 days of the life of the child is now covered by law. Okay, this was passed under the Duterte administration because it is said that the first 1,000, not 100, the, the first 1,000 days is the period of rapid growth where nutrient deficiencies can have long-term consequences. That's why the government is there to, to provide uh, support to its citizens. In the form of this law, so so there, here is another law, yung for for peace law. So this is the Pantawid Pampamilya uh, Pantawid Pamilyang Filipino Program, or the RA one one three one zero. So this provides a uh, financial aid to poor household that meet the qualifications to improve what to improve their health, nutrition, and education. And this was passed into law by President Duterte. Under this law, the government will provide conditional cash transfer to so may, may ATM sila for a maximum period of seven years. Okay, And among those who are qualified are farmers, fishermen, homeless families, indigenous people, those from the informal sector, and those living in isolated and disadvantaged areas, including places without electricity. What are the qualifications? So those that are classified as poor and near poor by the DSWD, and the poverty threshold issued by the Philippine Statistics Authority at the time of the selection that members are uh, uh, have members that are newborn up to 18 years old as well as those with pregnant members at the time of registration and they are willing to comply with the conditions set by the law what are the conditions so uh, not lower than 300 per child enrolled in daycare and elementary program for a maximum of 10 months a year. 
So merong stipend, no? Not not lower than 7,000 per child enrolled in high school per month for a maximum of 10 months in a year. And then health and nutrition grant not lower than 750 a month. So mayaman na sila for a maximum of 12 years. But, but you know, uh, this, uh, this cash transfer is very specific as, as to its goal, which is to improve the health, nutrition, and educational status of poor people. Persons who will be fine falsifying their information in the regist registry uh, so that they can just get the cash, may be imprisoned for a month up to a year and may be fined with not less than 10,000 but not more than 100,000. Okay, so uh, those are the laws at the national level. But you know, in our university, we have our, our own law. Kasi dami dami kasing mga batas pertaining to gender. But we have also endeavored, endeavored because the prim, PRIMSU is a state university. You have to comply with all those laws that have been mentioned earlier. So we have actually a guide code or the compilation of uh, policies pertaining to gender issues within the university. So um, some of these are on this slide, so part four of the guide code of our university uh, contains provisions on the guide focal point system. No? Here we, we, we find that there are provisions governing international linkages. And then for the establishment of the Sambales God Resource Center and God Data Banking System. Also, the, the policy provides that instruction should be gender fair and we should have gender responsive research program, gender responsive extension program, and student services, as well as human resource policy. So this is, this, this is a good uh, practice in our university. So we have a lot of activities all throughout the year, and um, maybe the other speakers will also elaborate on some of those. You know, gender and development laws are passed and implemented by the Philippine government in order that we as a nation achieve development that is participatory and empowering, equitable, sustainable, free from violence, respectful of human rights, supportive of self-determination and actualization of human potentials of those particularly who are in the margins. Thank you for listening and we hope that you stay safe and God bless.